Hi guys, I'm Shmi, hello and welcome back to the channel where you join me today for a first look at this, the new Ferrari Daytona SP3. We're here at Finale Mondiale at Mugello Circuit in Italy and we're going to take an exploration of the latest in the Icona series, the new Daytona SP3 celebrating the Ferrari sports prototypes of the 1960s, flanked either side here by the Monza SP1 and the Monza SP2, the first of the Icona models. This has just been presented. It's it's a first opportunity here at Mugello for customers to explore the car and we should be able to get up close and personal to take in all the details and understand what's gone into it, why they've made it, the facts and figures and explore today the Daytona SP3. This is it then, the Daytona SP3, sandwiched between the Monzas, the second of the Icona series, a car with its roots in the design and its ethos linking back to the 1960s sports prototypes from Ferrari, the likes of the 330p3, 330p4, and cars of that era, and in particular, the 1967 Daytona 24 hours, where Ferrari took all three positions on the podium, and you can see so many of the design cues as we explore around this, but fundamentally, this is probably one of the last naturally aspirated V12 mid-engine hypercars, 840 horsepower, effectively the power plant from the 812 Competizione redeveloped with the dual clutch gearbox, all the power to the back, but no hybrid or batteries or electric. This is all about that NA V12 and it will sound glorious. It's based, as you can tell, in some ways upon the platform and the chassis of the LaFerrari Aperta. You can see those proportions, a very long shape, but with a lot of built-in aero, no active aero, all fixed aero to optimize, but also link in the design as well. There are lots and lots of details for us to explore, but fundamentally seeing it here, I think this is a stunning car. Let's have a better look and go through some of the design details before very shortly, I can head up onto the stage to check out the rear of the car and also take a look at the interior of the Daytona SP3. Plus today, we're going to be seeing another example in a lovely dark red going out for a parade lap on track here at Mugello. But this car, very much invokes emotions of the Ferrari race cars of the 1960s. For example, like that 67 Daytona winner, the open driving experience. There's a removable Targa roof panel, of course, removed for this example to show us what it's like open. And then the windscreen around towards the B pillars has this curvature wrapping around, encompassing the occupants. But there are plenty of nods on the car in the design to the Ferraris of old. For example, the painted Scuderia shields worn on the sides. And then here, above the headlights, you have what's called the upper mobile panel. Panel, which actually slides up to reveal more of the lights as you start the car and drive off, giving you those feelings of the pop-up headlights of old, which you could no longer do on a production car. Then you have these bumperettes, the carbon fiber pieces that come around the underside. Of course, a full carbon fiber body based around the carbon fiber tub that sets the fundamental chassis for it and of course lots of openings around the front for the cooling and all of the exposed carbon as well. A quick look around from the other side. In a moment we can go up and look at it more closely but let's talk about the engine found in the Daytona SP3. The mid-rear mounted six and a half litre naturally aspirated V12. A development in fact of the engine found in the 812 Competizione. And here we have the Competizione, the coupe of the 812, and we have the Competizione Aperta sitting behind it. In the case of the Daytona SP3, we have 840 horsepower of naturally aspirated V12 loveliness, 697 Newton meters. It will do the zero to 100 km per hour sprint in just 2.85 seconds, and the zero to 200 km per hour sprint in only 7.4. An indisputable amount of power, and no doubt it will be accompanied by quite the soundtrack. Here on the stand, we can take a quick look then around towards the rear of the Daytona SP3 and you can see the shapes that the car wears around its body have a complete look over the rear deck lid of course this opens up housing inside that magnificent engine the 6.5 litre NA V12 but I think it's all about the design back here these horizontal slats similar to the 330 P4 the centrally mounted twin exhaust tailpipes Squircles almost, the squared off shape of those. And you can see the diffuser as well, the carbon fiber, all fixed aero, no active aero, but all optimized to be as efficient as possible, reducing drag, helping obviously with high speed performance. And this is an angle I particularly like. If you look through the doors, you can see the air channel here. It actually goes all the way through. You can see through to the front wheel. Through this channel that runs along inside the door itself. And look at the way the body is sculpted here at the side. This detail through the center, also a historical Ferrari nod. And you have these channels in the doors for the airflow to be managed in towards the cooling, the radiators and the coolers for the car 
itself. Of course, quite busy up here, an opportunity to be up close. We've got a new P0 Corsa tyre that's been developed specifically for the car as well. We've got some quite large wheels on the back here, but all of the carbon fibre, these strips for the tail lights that run around the back, fitting just below this integrated this bolt you have to the deck again, helping with the downforce, the openings all around for the cooling and all of the different shapes and squeeze around towards this side just for a moment to take this in every opportunity to explore around the back just a couple of moments up here on the stand itself this is really a very very cool thing and the more you look at it the more details there are to notice we have the traditional style fuel filler cap one back here as well we've got the painted shields on the side of the car also and the door handles you'll notice are just tucked in under here and so you press that in to release it and pop it up this is how the car sits without the target panel in place obviously when you add that to the car it will change the usability and the style of it completely wow what an amazing thing to be able to behold here on the stand let's take a quick look inside the car and you can see exactly how the interior of this is formed around the carbon fiber tub the seats completely integrated into the tub with the adjustable pedal box down here similarly to how it was carried out on the la ferrari we've got the new style steering wheel ferrari's philosophy for the new interior controls that curved 16 inch display that sits behind the touch controls that you have around the wheel including the manatino the lovely carbon fiber finish the led shift lights up at the top here in the center is where the key is positioned in that central tunnel and then there is where you have the newly introduced control for the dual clutch gearbox that ferrari feature in their cars reminiscent of the gated manuals of old and that's also where you select your launch control your manual or your reverse gear for example but as you look around obviously the targa roof panel connects and attaches you can see the brackets for how that fits into place and also it's a bit of the aero work back here between the headrests which is all to do with improving the feeling inside the cabin and this wraparound feel of the glass. Again, more brackets for the target panel to be introduced and placed, but this very much curving around the cabin and giving reason for the mirrors to be stuck out onto the front wings, as well as having the controls around the center and plenty more to explore, all finished with this beautifully presented carbon fiber, the full door cards, the leather inserts, the quilting that you can see here, the historical nods through that as well, and so many more wonderful touches to the interior of this magnificent machine as we take a quick look at it here. I'm over at the start line. In fact, in the pit lane at the moment, you can hear there are plenty of festivities here at Finale Mondiale, but very shortly, the Daytona SP3 is going to be going for a parade lap, and from experience, it might be quite fun to watch, but you can see everything going on here on the start grid at the moment. Just opposite us in the pit lane, we have various cars getting ready in the pit garages immediately opposite. You can see the headlights of the Daytona SP3. Also in there is a 330p3 and a 330p4. We've got some of the 48 Challenge Evo race cars, some F1 cars, just beyond some of the older Formula One cars, and plenty more here in the pit lane. In fact, the garages down that way are all of the XX program cars at the FXXK Evo, but it's seeing that in a moment that we are here for. Hopefully we'll be able to hear it in anger as it comes out any moment now and then goes for a parade. Well, that was a sound and a half. The F1 cars are off, but things are also gearing up on this side. It's looking pretty busy over there. You can spot some of the 330s. This is going to be legendary in a moment when they all come out. But the noise of those F1 cars as they did those launches on the start line there. Wow! I think we're about to have a demo of a pit stop. How cool was that to see? Not every day you're that close to F1 cars on the move. Wowzers. I think the challenge looked like they're going out next. Sights and sound of Ferrari race cars. Out for all the challenge cars. <laughs> That's not normal. It's time. Have a look at this. The dark red Daytona SP3. The startup sounds of the 330s are mega. I suspect we won't really be able to hear the uh, new generation P12 over the 60s race cars. It's 
seeing all of these setting off in a moment and then we'll go and watch them from the other side it's going to be quite something to behold just look at this car beautiful specification the dark red the blue interior a failure at the wheel wow get ready for this time for the daytona to roll out look at that obviously the crowd is going to go straight after it sounds here right now are just fantastic. 1960s racing and you can see some of those design elements on those. Look at this sight, how cool is this? Back through it comes. Look at this. That's so cool. They're just clearing up some oil on the, uh, the tarmac, but look at that. It looks incredible just there. So he's sitting in front of the challenge cars. The 330s have lined up at the back. Well, this has gone mad. We've got the FXXKs. then close on the move that is so cool you can hear a little bit of the v12 not the loudest thing in the world at low idling revs presumably it will now return to its pit box so we carefully keep out of the way of the chaos of which there is about to be a lot i'm sure as everybody uh, goes for the shots <laughs> Really, really cool to see this on the move. You can see this being the running car. You can see the view of the engine through the window it has at the back. Daytona SP3. Sounds good. Love this paint color. Painted shields. There's air vents that has at the front. The bumperettes below the headlights. And it goes, and um, yes, away it goes. <laughs> well, we won't be seeing much more of that. Back over with this car. It is stunning, and the contrast between the satin white paintwork and the gloss exposed carbon fiber gives you these incredible details. And also, the brake light extends all the way across the rear, as we saw on the car out on track. There are so many elements to it, and the more time you spend looking, of course, this is the engine bay cover, the whole clam opens up towards the front, pivoting forwards, the twin exhaust pipes in the rear, in some ways reminiscent of those found on the new 296 GTB, but obviously this incorporating all of Ferrari's latest design and different features and elements into the one model. You come round, looking at the shape of the side windows almost and how the removable roof panel will be placed over the top of this car. It's a stunning, stunning thing, especially with the red leather against this white paintwork. Imagine driving in that and listening to the glorious V12 behind you, wailing away as you shift or snap between the gears thanks to the very, very fast dual clutch gearbox that it features. And then to see these vents up front as well, giving the car a little bit more width at the front. It's a very long nose, helping with the aerodynamic profile, as is often the way on newer era cars. And of course, the carbon fiber, the carbon ceramic brakes, the car wears as well. Lovely thing to be up close and personal with. It would be a mistake of mine if I had not come round to this side to take a quick look as well at the 812 Competizione and the Competizione Aperta. There are going to be 999 Competizionis of the Coupe, 599 of the Aperta, so clearly the more desirable for the collectors. But this is just incredible. Again, that six and a half litre V12, but the open top experience, front mid-mounted, hardcore GT. The Competizione being effectively the track-going version of the 812 Superfast and the 812 
GTS as the convertible, but in this case, with a very different style, of course, with those cut-off side windows and the open format with a panel that you can place on instead. And then the coupe offering still a little bit more, let's say, road-going usability and practicality, if you can call it that, for a hardcore Ferrari GT model. But these, like the F12 TDF that preceded it and the 599 GTO that came before that, will inevitably be very highly sought after down the line. You have this boomerang style carbon fiber aero piece across the front and some all sorts of other things as you start to look around and you can see what's going on here, what's going on at the side and everything that they've incorporated into a very good looking car, it has to be said. I suppose for today we need to start wrapping things up. The launch of the Daytona SP3 here at Finale Mondiale and the more time I've spent around this car, the more I've learned and found out about it. For example, there are s ducts at the front with the air coming up through the bonnet, which help the downforce at the front end. There are integrated bits of aero all around it wherever you look. There will be many different liveries that customers can spec from the stripes to having roundels to whether there are the painted shields or the more traditional enamel badges and so much more. It will be amazing to see these coming to the road. There will be 599 of them in total, the production number. So a few more than the 500 Monzas were out of the 500 customers chose if they were going to go for the SP1 or the SP2. It will cost, inclusive of tax here in Italy, 2 million euros, which is actually not all that bad when you consider what it includes for that with that V12, which revs, by the way, to 9,500 RPM. So imagine driving a car developed on from the LaFerrari Aperta with the engine making 840 horsepower, naturally aspirated horsepower, the most powerful combustion engine that Ferrari have made, revving up to 9,500 with no roof on it as well, and with the new Thundershift gearbox, the seven-speed dual clutch that's been worked for this car. I have no doubt that is going to make for the most stunning of driving experiences. The Daytona SP3, I think has quickly become one of my favorite cars in the entire world. This already was from my first drive I had with it, and I cannot wait to drive one of these down the line. For today though, that is all. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this first look here at Finale Mondiale of the new Ferrari Daytona SP3. That's it though, and I'll see you again very soon. Cheers.